In high volume consumer electronics, cost and performance are the key drivers. The pace of change is such that design times are compressed to just a few months from conceptual design to production. Miniaturization of electronics and less tolerance of over-design is continuing to increase power densities at all package levels. Removing heat is crucial to the operation and long-term reliability of electronics. Flowtherm XT for pads allows you to explore the design space to ensure the most cost-effective cooling solution is chosen by considering the effect of all aspects of the design, such as the package selection, PCB layout, board structure, and enclosure design. For this example, we will show you how, with Flowtherm XT, you can quickly get a rough thermal mapping of the design in an enclosure with the board floating in it with assumed conditions outside the box. The simulation will take into account both conduction through solid materials and convection in the air. Then we will simulate the board attached to a more detailed model of the housing and more detailed models of the ICs and account for radiation in the simulation. Flowtherm XT includes a robust library of models for materials such as alloys, high-performance polymers, and IC packages to name a few. The library also includes models for geometric shapes such as heat sinks and fans. In this example, we want a plastic box rather than the default aluminum alloy. We will model the housing with nylon 66 polymer. Then we will add a heat sink from the library. The board we are using is fully routed so the copper traces can be read from the file. However, if the routing has not been performed or you simply want to ignore them, we can change the percentage of copper in signal and power planes for simulation. For a typical board layout, there can be many thousands of components. However, for the purpose of thermal analysis, not all of these are relevant. The most common requirement is to not include the very small components and or those with little or no power. Now we run the solver and generate the plane plot. There are a number of ways of interacting with the plane plot. For example, show manipulator. This allows us to dynamically drag the plane through the model. We can also look at airflow by hiding the temperature scaler and selecting show vectors. The peak temperature around the ICs is approximately 175 degrees C. There are a number of reasons for this. For example, there are no vents in the box to allow cooling air to enter. However, some of our modeling assumptions may also be at fault. For example, the board is simply floating, so there is no conduction path to the casing. Additionally, we have taken into account conduction and convection, but not radiation. This can be significant in cases without forced cooling where there are high temperature differences. Now let's simulate changing the enclosure used to a more realistic case from our library. At the same time, we're going to add more detailed models to the ICs. When you run the simulation and generate the plane plot, you can see that the temperature has gone down significantly around the ICs by approximately 75 degrees C. An important aspect of thermal design is to determine which uncertainties in the model have the greatest effect on critical component temperatures. Once these have been assessed, efforts can be directed towards improving those aspects of the design, both through design changes and by obtaining more accurate data for the simulation. Flowtherm XT in the PADS product creation platform from Mentor Graphics gives multi-skilled designers and electrical engineers the design space exploration necessary to keep product costs competitive as well as reliable.